So I'm out here collecting a soil sample. It is March 8th, 2024. I'll collect it from about eight different spots, mix it together, and then I'll send it in. Started off with clearing a bunch of limbs and trees, mostly white ash from the emerald ash borer. I sent two soil samples off, one to Whitetail Institute, one to Penn State. Soil was ter terrible. pH was very low, 5.6, I think. It's about a week ago I spread the lime that we needed. They called, Penn State called for about 5,000 pounds per acre. This field is in total about eight acres, and we spread 22 tons of lime on it, so that should help it out. All but a couple wet spots that I just couldn't get to. The wagon was way too big for the tractor. I had no other option and uh, I just crossed my fingers for an entire day and I was able to get it done. Small two scoops with a skid steer at a time is all the more I could pull with it. Uh, up over the hill, there's a hill that I have to climb to get here on the food plot, tires were spinning. These are uh, loaded with fluid in the back, the back tires, and I have uh, plates on the front. Everything back this way is gonna be clover eventually. Everything back behind me, we're gonna go ahead and plow. I don't know if you can see them or not, but my markers are back behind me. Hey, she's gonna be rough. It's gonna be a mess to disc it too. Look at that nice dog leg I got right in the middle of it there when I had my neck cranked back for 20 minutes. That looks nice. That sod is something else. I knew it would be tough, but... Uh, here we are. I got the disc since I broke the plow. So we'll go ahead and disc what we can. fertilizer here some 5 14 42 for the beans and some triple 19 for the corn this, the, this spreader should work but the only problem is I'm thinking that it's gonna be too close to the ground and it's not gonna get a good spread so worst case scenario I put my hitch back on the tractor hook that on the hitch and use the tractor so I can raise it up a little bit from here down to the, those trees down there everything over here three and a half acres those will be soybean. See how far this throws us. Let me go ahead and uh, flip the switch on. Actually, it does do pretty good. I think it'll be all right. Change of plans. So, I had some issues. I think it was just bad connection, but the wire coming out of here goes to this yellow wire and the yellow wire has the little pinchers and the little pinchers go to the big pinchers and the big pinchers go to the battery and i think it'll work the problem was it wasn't much higher than that off the ground and it still spread it pretty wide but it wasn't nearly it wasn't going to be enough so luckily i had this with me to bring the trailer back and i was able to get the hitch out because i couldn't get out before so that came out i was able to get that in Jumper cables are old and the connections aren't good, but I think I got it pretty well figured out. So we'll go ahead and start putting the uh, 51442. So it's going to be 250 pounds per acre. Back in you go. got this freaking tractor stuck in reverse you've got to be kidding me boy this is just going downhill so fast it's not even funny well let me see if I can fiddle around with it I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it out I might as 
well just go back to the truck. There's no point in even trying. Oh my God. First time ever. Oh, it's in first. Idiot. You need a pry bar and a wrench. This has to go. I need to pry it to the back. Or is it to the front? God dang it, I don't remember. The gear has to go forward. Oh, that's it. That's because I panicked and lifted up on it while I put it in reverse. John the boofer strikes again. What a boofer. Just full blown yanked on it in reverse and that was it. All right, back to it. Things are starting to go a little bit better now. I got it covered once and I still have 500 pounds I can put on, that I'm gonna put on, <clears throat> but I wanted to, I didn't know where to set it and forget it. So I didn't want it to all blow out on the first pass, but I got everything covered once. We'll go ahead and uh, cover it again. Once I get this done here shortly, I don't have a whole lot of daylight left, I guess, because of all the problems I've been running into. But I'm gonna hook the disc, hook the discs back up, and start disking as long as I can here until dark. That's it for the fertilizer on the soybeans. We got the soybeans planted. Thought we we planted five bags of soybeans, and uh, this is the inoculant that we used. You can get it on Amazon. The cable broke to control the flow, so <laughs> Kurt came up on the four wheeler, dumped it in on the fly. Now he's gonna go get a drag, drag it in with a four wheeler. We're on our way out. Got, got everything planted and it's 9 30 so not too bad okay this is a six day update germinated or if the birds ate them all and i see nothing here's one looks like it tried to germinate and it hasn't done anything here's another one that tried to germinate died there's one growing right here but it looks like all the ones on top dried out and you end up with almost a total failure of a food plot. Birds ate most of them and the ones that are still a lot that didn't get eaten, they dried up whenever everything else dried up and then they died. Only a small portion got covered up and everything that's exposed is dead. Well, it's been a week since I planted the beans the first time and it was a total failure, like I said earlier. So now I have this here. I don't know how many pounds are in here, but two people, we couldn't slide it. So I had to drive my truck back here to the food plot and I'm just gonna start loading them in here and spreading them. So go ahead and start this, it's about noon. She's a pretty warm one. We're gonna try to dish these in. Just this morning, I actually went up to Cory, PA and picked up another uh, TO35. Kurt, cousin Kurt bought it. So I went up there and grabbed that for him this morning. And he'll be out here with his later on today. Shut the valve. This thing's broken. That's about enough because I tend to spill a lot. You hit a little bump or bounce around and they go flying everywhere. Okay, here we go. one pass I have that much left I'm just gonna refill it look at that hen right there that's there's nothing planted there yeah you're out of the buckwheat there's buckwheat planted down there hi yi yi there's that hen she's coming right into my soybean she doesn't even care Bean and load number five. Okay, we got the beans down. We're gonna go ahead and dis them in. One of my pins, this pin's loose.
good. I straighten these out to get them less aggressive so I can cover the seat with the discs. When I get up here, you see how the front ones are almost straight, the back ones are not. So what it's doing is, this is doing a little bit, that's doing a lot, and it's all, it's making a big row right in the middle. I'm just gonna move them ahead one, just one, one hole right up here. They were all the way up here, as aggressive as you can get them. But we'll put them back, we'll put them right here. I guess you can make them even more aggressive by moving these ones to the back, but then you just, eventually you run into these hitting each other. Move them right there. Well, that's not a whole heck of a lot different. That's all right, We're, we, I, can't, I can't do too much. These bolts are all just terrible. I had to snap the one in half. I couldn't get it loosened up the other day out here and the threads were shot. And luckily I was able to twist it in half. Waiting on Kurt to get here with his tractor and then we'll split it up. very long our calder packer broke in half the, the tube inside the pipe broke so Kurt's got to limp that out of there but always something we'll get it fixed all right we're back in action the whole center the whole axle snapped in half on that so we had to tear the whole calder packer apart and grind and re-weld now it's still holding together for 75 feet that it's gone we'll see so the soybeans are done we have everything in this is round two she's all been cold packed first we disked it in luckily kurt got his tractor today he helped me out with the with the cold packer so what these beans are i would call it a uh, a partial failure for sure um there are some coming up but i only put one i put five bags of beans on this three and a half acres which was hardly, it, I should have put a whole nother bag on, maybe even a little bit more. And what happened was we used a drag and it didn't cover up a lot of the seeds. So a ton of them were exposed. So even though a lot are growing, they're still, it, it'd be very spotty. I know that with a deer density, it, they would have wiped it out. We would have, it would have been very spotty. Now, that being said, there are a lot that are germinating. But for the price of seed, it was worth it. I'm not going to after spending all the time and money on the fertilizer and all the money on the lime for all the more the seed cost us to reseed it why not and then come to find out a lot of it is germinating i should say some of it's germinating and you would think that the disc would screw it up and the call to packer but it sure didn't look she's just as fine as fine and dandy if you see there there's a lot here now this is from earlier i'll poke you in the ground Basically, what I just did was layer soybeans. <laughs> See you on this next update, June 1st. So it's been two weeks and two days since I initially planted this bean plot. A week afterwards, I planted it again, thinking that the first beans false germinated and I had a real low germination rate. I was expecting all that. And I figured, well, it doesn't matter when I disc these beans in, it's gonna ruin those little seedlings. Long story short, it did not ruin them. The call to packer didn't ruin them. Everything's growing really, really good. So I would say I have around 550 pounds of soybeans on this three and a half acres. Um, that's a lot, but we also have a lot of deer. And for what it costs for seed, it I would much rather have this than 
you know, uh, a sparsely looking uh, food plot. It's been a week and a little or so with the, uh, the second round of beans. It's been two weeks and two days with the first round. Everything's coming up really good. We put some exclusion, ca exclusion cages up near the back of the food plot where the deer tend to be the most. I feel like that's gonna have the highest browse pressure. So all in all, everything went really well here at the end of the day. Um, ton of work, a ton of time and energy. And at the end, it was all worth it. And I couldn't be happier to be honest with you. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll put up another video here once we do the spraying. We gotta go, thanks.